Fear is a path to the dark side of the Force. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Welcome, listeners, to a brand new episode of Gnerd Corner's Cinematic Gnerdgasm. Hi there, everybody. I am your host, Jay Poole, from Jay Poole's Gnerd Corner. And tonight, we have a special movie review tonight. And I would like to welcome back my co-hosts, Jana. Hola. Mick. Hello. And I would also like to... Welcome back, my movie co-host, Nate. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Nate. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm chill. You chill. You chill. So, <laughs> all of you have seen Star Wars The Force Awakens. Thrice. All right. Just making sure, because, you know, there have been... All this this crap on the internet about people defriending people if you spoil it. Because, you know, we're adults. We're all, <laughs> we're all mature adults. Well, we can do a spoiler-free version on the short and then, you know, then spoil away after that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Actually, I, let's just do the review part on this and we can do another episode <laughs> where we go in-depth on the thing. Because there's so much... Agree. Like, to Agreed. look at this film that you could spend like an hour or two just trying to nitpick or trying to speculate. Yeah, agreed. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to give our scores. And I usually do this at the very end after we give our afterthoughts. But sometimes it doesn't always end with everybody on the podcast. So uh, I'm going to start with Jana's score, then Mick, then Nate, and I'll give my score after that. What's our score up to? We're, you can do one out of five or, you know, one out of ten. Let's, but it has let's to... make it unified today. Let's make it unified. Let's make it lightsabers. How many out of how many lightsabers? Yeah, let's do lightsabers. Like and four we'll... out of four lightsabers or something? Four out of five. We'll make five the best and, and one the worst. Yeah. Okay. I get to go first? Yes. I say five out of five. I enjoyed it. I missed a couple spots, though, because of... A cute little munchkin noodle strudel that wasn't mine. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> cool, cool. And Mick? I'd uh, I'd have to go with a four point, uh, let's say like an eight or something like that, because it was, <laughs> I mean, really couldn't ask for much more, but I do have my issues with it. Fair, very fair. Uh, Nate? That mirrors my own thought. It's funny he said 4.8 because I would say 4.75. I loved it. It moved me in every way I needed it to. Having seen it three times, I noticed there's a couple of things that I would criticize in any movie. But as a Star Wars movie, it satisfied me completely. So it's an, it's an almost perfect movie, but not there due to a couple of flaws. So 4.75 out of five lightsabers for me. Nice. Yeah, I go for a, a 4.5 um, red lightsabers, or red cross <laughs> lightsabers. Uh, I originally, when I first saw it, gave it a 5, but I did see it three times recently. I'm going to be seeing it uh, a fourth time this weekend. But and, you know, after seeing it in a second or third time, you start to see things that you didn't see the first time because you're so enthralled with just Star Wars. It's been over a decade since the last Star Wars came out. So, uh, I, you know, I had to dumb it down to about, you know, a point five in score. So it's a four point five for me. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is when it made you laugh, it really made you laugh. Oh yeah, when it, it, when it got you excited, it really got you excited. And when it made you cry, it made you cry. But like, there, you know, like, like I think we've all kind of seen that there, 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 there are a few things in terms of character development and that they just sort of take away from that possibly could have been perfect. But let's be real. Uh, for me, this gave me back Star Wars. Like, this gave... I, I was almost kind of afraid to watch it, and it gave me back Star Wars. I felt like I was four years old again in the theater, and 
I repeatedly had to wipe my eyes because I was both so happy and so sad sometimes. It really gave Star Wars back to me and made me feel like a little kid again. Exactly, exactly. Now let's go with the uh, the quick synopsis of it. I'm not going to go really in-depth in it because there's a lot that I could spoil by just giving a huge synopsis. So I'm just going to say this takes approximately 30 years after the uh, Return of the Jedi, after the, the second Death Star was destroyed. And we find uh, that, out that this new order called the First Order, which uh, rose from the Galactic Empire, is now you know terrorizing the galaxy and the New Republic. And they're searching for Luke Skywalker, who vanished. Uh, there are reasons. Uh, if I give that away, it gives a big plot point in the movie away. Uh, we get to also meet some interesting new characters as well. We get to meet... A scavenger named Ray, who lives on a desert planet that's very, you know, a, that looks like Tatooine. It was shot in Abu Dhabi, so it's all desert. <laughs> and we also get to meet a disillusioned s- a stormtrooper named Finn, or at least he's given the name Finn. And we also get to meet uh, the resistance pilot, well, one of the best resistance pilots they have, named Poe Dameron. And a small little bald droid named BB-8. Who was probably the star of the movie. Oh, he was <laughs> adorable. Well, kids are going to want BB-8. I mean, he's going to... Oh, man, that toy's going to make Disney billions. Just that one toy. <laughs> no, yeah, no. As I said, I had my friend's daughter, and this kid, she... I mean, before we got in, she was just... BB-8, she was saying the name, mm-hmm. and she'd never seen the movie. It was so adorable. Have any of you seen the toy? Yeah. I have it. I have the pop figure. It's... No, the actual, the actual robot... Oh no! Just on the movie. It's phenomenal. It's like a Ramba or a Roomba, whatever. It can it can memorize your house and run around on its own. It has oh. a little it has a little projector in it, and it works just like the thing does in the movie. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. <laughs> it can drive dogs crazy. That's awesome. Was that, <laughs> is that the one hundred and fifty dollar one? Yeah. Oh wow, that's not bad pricing. No, yeah. it's not. And you can control it from your cell phone. Holy crackers. <laughs> I want one. I mean, it's not a full size one, but it is. It is adorable. Oh, yeah. It drives cats insane as well. It's about the size of a oh. softball. I'm okay with that. I can drive my cats insane. They're already crazy. <laughs> they don't have far to go. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, BB-8 is going to be the, uh, this year's Christmas toy to find. Another toy that is actually really hard to find that uh, Disney hasn't been really jumping on is Ray. And Ray, in my opinion, even though BB-8 was the breakout like uh, droid star in here, she's like the breakout actor in here, and she really hasn't been in anything before this. I mean, just small little parts, if anything, if you look in her IMDb, but really nothing to you know look at. And she really you know, appears in this and really breaks the door open. And uh, she did a really good job for a big role like this, taking over a big role. And she is technically like the uh, the Luke Skywalker of, you know, the new series. Mm-hmm. And she is, in my opinion, she's awesome. Uh, you know, that's one word I can describe her as. Is she your new crush? Uh, she's a nerd crush, yes. I think she's a bunch of people's nerd crushes after this movie. <laughs> <laughs> she's a 23-year-old actress who is, um, like I said, Hasn't been really seen in anything, and she was, you know, nervous the first couple days. She was told that her acting was wooden by J.J. Uh, Abrams, and you know, told to, you know, get with the program, and she got with it. And I thought she did a really good job for her role in here. Yeah, she was solid. I, I, I thought that I thought that her character had a couple of flaws in, in how it was written. There were just certain things that were far too convenient. But, eh, so what? You know, at the end of the day, we could pick it all apart, and in, in a world where there are lightsabers in the Force, let's not worry too much about a, a young lady with exceptional skills and talents in several different areas, so. Oh, yeah, definitely, and I'm glad they didn't bring up the Are you the talking whole... about porn stars or, or Star Wars still? I'm still talking about Star Wars, but... Oh, just um, checking it. I, uh, <laughs> I don't quite get the correlation, although... Oh, oh it was the, the, the talents... Oh no! Well, no. I mean, just 
just because she was a great mechanic and she instantly grasped how to fire, she could fix the Millennium Falcon better than Han and little things like that where you're just going, but you've been stuck alone on a planet for your whole life doing what? So it's not it's not impossible, but it is implausible. You just gave away a little bit of a spoiler there. Yeah. I did, but that's why you're going to edit it out. Hopefully. Yes, yeah. hopefully if I'm not lazy. That's not that's not that big of a spoiler. You see it in the you can see that one coming. But anyway, this is going to be my problem because most of my issues with the movie is they're all going to be huge spoilers, so yeah, uh, bad Mick. Bad, time. bad Mick. Now people are going to have to defriend you. Although, although I will, Elf, they, they just warn him, hey, there's a couple of spoilers in the thing, just watch it. I mean, and by this time, I, I'm going to be real. If, 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 if you haven't watched the Star Wars movie by the time this thing gets published, you're not as big a fan as you think yeah. you are. So, grow up and deal. But, yeah. um, uh, but I don't want to spoil it for anybody. That's, that's true. I, I only have a couple of minutes left. I, I would just like to point out that I thought that it was so beautiful to see them all together, and Harrison Ford was the bomb, and uh, the on-screen chemistry between Chewie and Ray was just awesome, and Poe and uh, Finn were great. It, 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 the, the the three I, I forget who said it, but the three H's were there. The humor, the humor was there. The heroes were there, and the humanity was there. Oh yeah, and the humor wasn't just done by like one comedy relief. There were points no. in the movie where the humor came out in characters that were, you know, inconsequential, like the two stormtroopers walking down the hall realizing they should go the other direction. Yes, brilliant. And it, and it added relief to situations that could have been very um, overly weighty otherwise. Um, but, I, but I loved it, and, I, and I, I hope people just shut the hell up now about the damn cross guard. Uh, oh, yeah. It was it, 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 it was never a problem for me because I've had actually sword training, so I just knew that that wasn't going to be an issue. Um, it was interesting how we used it, though, especially when you got a close range to somebody. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. But I mean, that that the, the main thing was like, uh, oh, he's going to hurt himself with it. I'm like, it says the it says the person who doesn't know how to use a sword. I mean, get out of here, dude. Whatever. Um, yeah, so it was gorgeous. The sound the sound of his lightsaber. As though it was warped. I will say one thing: Kylo did something at the beginning of the movie that he never did again, that indicated a level of power that we haven't seen any Jedi do really. Uh, and 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 I I found it unfortunate that that didn't really take place again. That should have been like a gimmick. Yeah, in, in my opinion, the the Force in here reminded me of since the Force is reawakening. Um, it reminded Ooh. me of the abilities uh, in the Knights of the Old Republic. You Ooh, know? good point. And good Knights point. of Old Republic were very powerful. They could like topple mountains. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. That's it. That explanation works for me. I'm going to go with it. I like it. I was pleased they did. They did show a little bit more of the Force's power in this movie, and it's a different, uh, different scope in which it can be used because. The other movies that they don't, they don't convey the power of the force. Like it's very like understated in the films. I think this one they they tapped into it a bit more. Yeah, definitely. And with yeah, uh, and, oh, go on. No, go ahead. All right, with you know Ray, you know being able to harness the force like she did, I have a theory. The reason that she could do it so quickly, but. That's either giving a huge spoiler away, or it's just another you know one of those uh, whimsical fan theories that's out there. But that's just me. That's just me. I, I can't say it right now until our <laughs> spoiler podcast. I have a much simpler one. Have you uh, ever met somebody who just picked up a guitar for the first time and can play better than you? No. I have. <laughs> I have, and I'm a pretty damn good guitarist. Uh, I, I mean, I, I toured with Slayer, so I, I think, I, and I, for 16 years, I was a professional musician in Europe, and I've taught guitar for, you know, now over 20 years. I've seen kids pick up a guitar for the first time, and within hours, just hours, be near virtuoso. It's rare, but it happens. And nobody likes it, but get over it. There's just people who are more talented. That's interesting. I, I did hear uh, one theory that says that she had her memory wiped when she was just a child. Yeah. Oh, so she's Wolverine. Okay. 
<laughs> and, and so this I, is just coming back to the surface. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see it now. She'll have like X-23 lightsaber blades out of... Oh, I love this. This is a great picture. But no, I thought J.J. Abrams did a really, really good job with this film. You know, being thrusted into the spotlight like this, even though he's taking over the Star Trek series, Star Wars is his real passion. And I think he did it better. As much as I like the Star Trek movies, I really think you can see that in this one. Oh, he yeah. Loved, he loved the source material. He loved it, and that shows. Star Wars is one of the reasons he became a filmmaker. Yeah, I heard that, I heard that too. Yeah, That's cool. So, so you can see the passion. When he comes from a true fan, you can see... You know, a lot of people were saying Star Trek felt like a Star Wars movie. is because he was <laughs> writing it like a Star Wars movie. I mean, he even had R2-D2 in both films floating, you know, just passing by the screen <laughs> I when people say that oh it made it too much like a Star Wars movie said, yeah you're right Star Trek's never been that good oh oh ouch <laughs> and I say that as somebody who actually likes Star Trek yeah hey guys I, I hate to be the killjoy I, I'm really sorry that I have to buzz out I, I'm really glad and honored that you guys let me let me uh, play with you and uh, I hope we can do it again sometime but I unfortunately have to get rocking back home Definitely, definitely. And uh, join us for the uh, spoiler review. Ooh, like, I'd love to. Yes, that will get really in-depth in this, there. Hey, guys, have a great night, and thanks for having me. You, you too. too. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. So on a non-spoiler part, I like finding out all the cameos of all the, like, the other celebrities who were just in it for like a split second, and you didn't catch it the first time you saw it or anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig was actually one of the cameos in there, and he was <laughs> in... You didn't even know it was him. No, because you heard, and you, you just heard his voice because he was the one that she told to put the gun down and stuff. Exactly, yeah. It was like, James Bond's in here? I know. And but, see, that's the fun stuff is finding out all these celebrities who were in it and you were like, oh my God, they were in that? I didn't even know. And then like when you go watch it again, you're going to look for those people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I also liked... Um, Let's see, we didn't talk about Adam Driver. Unfortunately, Nate had to leave. But we didn't talk about Adam Driver, who plays Kylo Ren in here. Now, what did you think about Adam Driver's performance as the main antagonist of this film? Well, he wasn't in it very much. No, he was in it very much. He was, but it wasn't like, he was not like... I, I thought he gave a good performance. He did. I, and... We just didn't get enough of him to get more sense. I, yeah, that that's true, but I think he did set himself up as a good villain for the new trilogy. Yeah, I, I just I wish I would have seen more of the bad guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I heard that from some other people that they wish that he was more. Um, I won't say threatening because he was a threatening character. No, he was threatening. I just think they just gave snippets of who he was. They didn't actually. Which is, yeah, that, and that that's like my whole, or one of my problems with the movie. It's just there's there's massive holes in the story that connect with Jedi to Episode 7. There's just so much that's happened that they don't tell us, which is going to force Episode 8 to be like... Exposition? Like, yeah, it's going to be an exposition movie because there's just so much that we still don't know. I... Yeah, the movie was amazing, but I walked out of there with a million questions. Like, okay, well, who's this guy, and why is this a thing, and how how did they get away with that one? And is yeah, definitely. And along with you know Adam Driver's character, he reminded me of a young Anakin, especially how he reacted when things didn't go his way. Yes, he did. I don't know, there was a couple moments where he kind of came off as whiny, and the first thing I thought of was Hayden Christian, and I'm like, oh man, great, another one. But I, I, do, I do get him a little bit more, and I feel like his character was definitely written better, so it's not really his fault per se. And he did handle that at the end, so I think he knows what he's doing, but I think he's, I think the thing with his character is he's like trying way too hard. He's and not not as an actor, but like Kylo Ren is trying too hard to live up to something that I don't even think he really knows what he's doing. Because I still I still don't wholly understand why he chose Vader over um, 
great number of Sith Lords. Yeah, definitely. And I don't think he was ever told that uh, Anakin redeemed himself in the very end. So he's pretty much talking to no one, yeah. especially when he's talking in the trailer to the helmet. If you see in the trailer, there's a burned helmet of Vader. So that's not really a spoiler if you've seen the trailer. Yeah. Uh, thinking that he's, you know, talking to Vader, helping him, you know, uh, with the dark side because he feels the light creeping towards him. And, uh, yeah, well, he, Anakin crossed over. He's no longer part of the dark side, so you're talking to nothing. Yeah, and idolizing Vader that way is, because, I mean, I look at Vader as a failed Sith Lord. So, you know, and plus they're not Sith, so I don't, I'm not sure what they're going for. And I want to know who the hell the Supreme Leader is. Like, that's what, just Snoke? a lot of me. Yeah, it's bothering me. There's a oh. lot of theories on who Snoke is, and if I give, if I say, I'll talk about that in the spoiler review. Yeah. Yeah. But Snoke is, uh, if I remember correctly, he's voiced by, uh, I just got his name, was a Smeagol. Um, oh, Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just big CGI effect in the movie where we get to meet this large, at least projection of Supreme Leader uh, Snoke. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of glad when it, he turned out to be like just a really HD hologram because I was sitting there and I'm like, oh man, now there's giants. I don't know if I'm okay with that. And then he turned and then he disappeared, and I was like, oh okay, all right, that, that's better. Yeah, definitely. Another character we have to talk about in here is Harrison Ford. And he really steals this movie. Even though Ray, it's all about Ray, just when we get to see Harrison Ford on screen, it just brings so many childhood memories back. And he still remembers how to play, Her yeah. um, you know, Han Solo. Or Han Solo, depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was just awesome to see him back on screen with Chewie by his side. But that's his personality, I think, more than anything. Because if you look yeah. at a lot of his movies, he's played that same kind of character. And if you watch his interviews and stuff, he's just kind of a dick like that. It's funny. Yeah, but it's more of... He's more hyped about this character than a lot of other roles I've seen no, him no. in. He yeah. seems to I'm be asleep saying, in a lot of other roles I've seen him in. I'm just saying, I think the role comes a little more natural to him than certain other things have. Yeah, Definitely. It seemed more natural to him than his last movie with Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's not. We don't talk about that. that. One. I I am like a huge indie fan, and oh god, that hurt you. That hurt. So we don't discuss that. Yeah, definitely. Not a thing. And I, I do think it was funny to see because he did play Han so well, but he had like there was that element that Han's like an old man now. So oh, yeah, like, but he's still up to his old tricks. Yeah, but like you'd still get like kind of crotchety at like newer things, like the compression switch and things like that. Yeah, there was a picture actually of him on the red carpet for one of the Star Wars premieres, and they split it down the middle, and they said uh, Harrison Ford is the only man that can be, let's see, um, happy and grumpy at the same time, and he's yes. just. Cause <laughs> sides of his face were like one side was smiling the other side looked like he was angry I've seen that picture <laughs> and then they showed what the picture actually looks like and it's like wow you're right <laughs> how does he do that no I really loved Harrison Ford in here he was really I, good and it I was like you know he's home he's back and you know you get yeah. to see him first scene you get to see him is and this isn't a spo really a spoiler because it's in the trailer he the first scene is the Millennium Falcon door opens up and both uh, he and Chewie just walk into the scene and they're like, we're home. Yeah. I think I think the biggest nostalgic moment for me was when they act the first time they show the, the Falcon on screen. Oh, yes. Because I, I honestly did not see that coming at all and I was, I was very excited to see it. Oh, yeah, and to see it like being called junk again. Yeah, I'm glad they stuck with that. I think it would have been better if they actually called it junk instead of garbage. Kind of feel like they could have taken advantage of that a little more, but still, they I'm very pleased with how they did that. Oh yeah, and the uh, there were a lot of atmospheric um, 
dogfight scenes in here because we've seen a lot of space fighting in all you know all the other Star Wars series, even the prequels, but not very many atmospheric fight, um, fight scenes with the ships that are you know, on planet, and that one with the Millennium Falcon versus the Tie Fighters through the Jakku Desert that was pretty intense, and I watched it in IMAX 3D. Yeah, we saw it in IMAX, too. Nice. We're on the edge of your seat? Yes. Yeah, that was a really well shot scene, and to see uh, Daisy Ridley's character, Ray, piloting the Millennium Falcon, and we see John Boyega's character, Finn, uh, trying to control the guns, which is the old guns. You can see just, you know, the old technology, the targeting technology on that thing from yeah, the original yeah. trilogy. I'm glad they brought that back to show, yes, he never changed it. It's still the same. It just, you know, harkens back to an older time when technology was kind of, uh. <laughs> Yeah. But, no, it was really interesting, you know, seeing the uh, Millennium Falcon back on the big screen and... Uh, I love the you know warp speed when they're going through hyperspace. Just that that look of it because we've never seen hyperspace in Star Wars movies like that. Because they go into hyperspace and you know then they pan away inside the ship and you never really get to see the ship traveling through hyperspace in the original trilogy. No. So it just gives you a different perspective of what these ships are actually going through. And I I love that effect. It, there were a lot of CGI effects in here, but not a lot as the uh, prequels and that's what J.J. Abrams really was trying to push. He was trying to push a lot you know, a mixture between CGI and practical and you could see so much practical effects in here. Yeah and I think that was a huge I mean that's probably one of our biggest problems with the prequels. It was just overkill on CGI like everything was CGI and it doesn't have to be, especially since the original trilogies, the effects were incredible, and they were, like, all practical. So, having, I think practical effects that look pretty damn good is, like, a Star Wars, you know, trademark, so to speak. So, having that in the new movie, I think, was a, definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, Definitely. Uh, another character in here we get to see is Carrie Fisher reprising her role as uh, Leia Organa, or Leah Organa, uh, or we call, call her General now. She's the General of the Resistance against the First Order. And we can see that she's aged a bit. Uh, yeah, because they didn't try to hide the fact. But they also, but it's years and years later, so of course they're not going to hide that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And also, it, it did look like they did keep her sober for this, at least. She's during, been sober during, for a while. Yeah, during, a couple years ago. Not the last time I saw asked a friend that went to see a panel of her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's not sober every day. It, it, but yeah. I felt bad, because you know what? There were all these people sitting there making fun of her. Oh, she hasn't taken care of herself. I don't want to see it because of that. It's like Grow up. She's freaking aged. It's normal. Yeah, it, it's been it's been thirty years since the original trilogy. So, I, the the scene I really loved uh, with her was when we get to see uh, Han and Leia finally seeing each other again. There's something that happens before, and there's going to probably be a lot more exposition in the next movie of exactly what happened. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to try to say something without it being spoiled. There is part where she's supposed to be sad. She wasn't very sad. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I had you right about that. I didn't notice it at first, but... We'll just say she's supposed to be sad. She didn't do very sad. Okay, yes. Well, um, but we're not going to say why or how. No, yeah, I no. I was trying not to spoil anything. I'm just saying. I want to say that was like an editing error. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks died. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when Jar Jar Binks died, she didn't get very upset. And since her and Jar Jar were so freaking close, she should have been sadder. Exactly, exactly. 
Jar Jar Binks really wasn't in the film. Yeah, we're uh, talking about something else. Exactly. J.J. <laughs> Abrams said that was his favorite rumor, like fan theory rumor about what was going to be in the film and that uh, Jar Jar was a Sith Lord. I never actually read the theory, <laughs> but J.J. <he, laughs> Abrams was like, it was so uh, like convincing and it seemed so real, like he was actually impressed with it. <laughs> and it almost made people think, is he really going to do it? Yeah. Is he really going to do it? Because Jar Jar Binks was a senator. So, yeah, that's close, being a Sith Lord. <laughs> uh, another breakout actor in here, and not really a breakout, because I think he's having a record year, uh, especially for an upcoming movie, X-Men Apocalypse. Oscar Isaac has really broken out this year. And, you know, with uh, Ex Machina and this movie and upcoming X-Men Apocalypse, uh, Oscar Isaac plays Poe Dameron. As we said earlier, he plays a Resistance X-Wing fighter pilot. And the movie pretty much starts off with him in it. In this really incredible intro that would not have really worked in the prequels because I could just say there's a dark tone at the beginning of this. Very. That's all I'm going to say. Who did he play in X? What, X Machina? Yeah. He was the, um, I forgot the guy's name, but he was the scientist who made uh, the made the machine, the robot. Oh, he, okay. Yeah. He's weird with, the, you know, not clean shaven. Yeah, I didn't, wouldn't even have connected the two. I didn't even realize that was him. Yeah, definitely. And also another one, um, you know, on the subject of Ex Machina, uh, another actor that was also in there was Domino Gleeson. Yes, I saw that. What and, else has he been in? Well, Domino Gleeson? Mm-hmm. Well, he was in this movie, of course. He played General yeah. Hux. Yes. And what was that movie? He was with a movie with Rachel McAdams. It was uh, Time Travel. In Time. Movie. In Time, yes. I knew I recognized him, but I couldn't think of where he was from besides that one movie, and I just never looked it up, not going to lie. Yeah, I think some... For some critics, uh, and some of my friends that are critics, one of the things about Domino Gleeson being General Hux is they complain that he looked too young to be a general. Yeah, he is really young looking. And too redheadish. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with red hair. They're like, you know that guy standing behind, you know, General Hux? He should have been the general. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, back to Oscar Isaac. I he had, the, I, I loved his role in here. He had the right amount of humor and the right amount of seriousness to you know play the role he he was playing. Uh, one of my friends that reviewed it uh, said that um, Poe, Ray, and Finn were sort of like three different versions of Luke Skywalker in you know the original trilogy. They were just split up. Yeah, I can see it. And uh, Poe was like the, the serious pilot, like the, uh, you know, for the resistance. And, but he did have some interesting uh, humorous lines in here, uh, which I didn't know if he was going to keep doing that throughout the movie, but uh, it wasn't, you know, overbearing, in my opinion. No. And, there w and there was, you know, right now there's a weird, even, um, thing going on the internet where people are trying to ship Finn and Poe together, which is really creepy. Well, they ship everybody. It works, though. It's funny. That's... Well, well, I mean, bromance. I've had I've had bromances with my friends, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get together and let's go sleep with each other, but well, yeah, there's but creepy like drawings. Brother and, of... and brothers and people still ship them. Like, anything's possible. <laughs> Have you seen the drawings? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go on Reddit. Don't go on Reddit. <laughs> It's 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 a dark area in Reddit that does that. They're all deviant art. <laughs> but no, I I did like uh, Poe and Finn's you know quote unquote uh, bro bromance friendship. Yeah. Um, I know. What? It, you took my jacket. <laughs> That's all I say. Yes. Um. So it actually. They just meet each other pretty much, and they seem to, you know, click with each other, but not like that. More like, let's be friends. And uh, I, I do like um, 
the way, uh, let's see, Ray, Ray's character, played by Daisy Ridley, how strong a female character she is. You know, there are a lot of strong female characters out there in movies. I'm not going to say there's never been one. Now, we look at Ripley from Aliens series. She's a very strong female character. Uh, but, you know, Ray is a very young woman who, uh, in her situation, you would think, you know, she would be more docile or, you know, need, she needs somebody to help her. But when we first see her, she is fending on her own. I mean, she's scavenging for, you know, parts to buy food. And she can defend herself pretty well. Which makes me wonder also about her staff. I will talk more about that in the spoiler review. But both ends of her staff remind me of some things. And mm. I don't even know if she knows what her staff is made out of. So, <laughs> I noticed that, that too. Yeah, I'm looking at them going, wait a minute, both ends of the staff remind, oh, wait a minute, you get a close-up look at them and realize there's their handles to something, and they're going, oh. Uh. Yeah, and, and after all the, you know, coincidence, like, things like that in the movie, I, it, it wouldn't even surprise me. Like, it's totally believable. It's a normal task. Yeah, but if we say any more, it'll just it will spoil way too much. And I think I've said spoils so many times in this review <laughs> because people just will shit on you online if you spoil it for them. I know uh, there are are people dedicating dedicated to either blocking or defriending people if they post something that's not even really a spoiler, but it looks like a spoiler. Well, I would have done it too. If somebody had posted before I'd seen it, because I saw it on Saturday, if someone had done it, I'd, I'd have, they'd have been gone. Just stay offline for a couple days. Why, why do you gotta ruin friendships over stupid shit? I just didn't read people's comments. Yeah, definitely. Well, I don't, I don't mind spoilers, in my opinion, but then again, I see the movie the first day. Uh, when did you first see this? I saw this on uh, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Saturday. At 7.30. Mm-hmm. Nice. I went to see it at 7 p.m. on Thursday and then stayed in the theater. Uh, then we had to go back outside and stay in the line in the cold until 2 a.m. for the uh, next IMAX 3D showing. So, yeah. Fun night. <laughs> I got two hours of sleep that day. <laughs> and you'll never bitch about it. What? You'll never bitch about it. Well, slightly. I, I had to work the next day. Oh. Fun! I almost fell asleep on the job. But uh, I enjoyed the film, and I did see it again, uh, which I'm going to see it a fourth time. By the time this podcast has come out, I probably will have already seen it a fourth time. So it's about, probably be a couple days. <laughs> uh, do you have any other things that you really enjoyed about this film? Mm. Other than it was really everything everyone wanted in a new Star Wars film. I liked Finn's character. Yeah. Because, you know, he wasn't... He, I think... Well, I mean, I guess he's supposed to be the new Han version. Both good and bad, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, he seems to know slightly what he's doing, but he's also clueless in some areas. Yeah. yeah. But his heart's in the right place. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, we get to see him in, like, a horrible situation where he realizes, am I fighting for the right team? So, and that's not really a spoiler. That's pretty much what you see yeah. in the trailer. It's like he was raised to do one thing, and now he has nothing to fight for. But wondering why he questions that is kind of a spoiler. Eh, it's kind of a spoiler. It's kind of a spoiler. I mean, it's hard to not describe the character without calling him like a disillusioned stormtrooper. Yeah. So, uh, I did like his character. I I didn't care for you know the early stuff that people are talking about, like, you can't have black stormtroopers. There are women stormtroopers in here. <laughs> yeah. We get to hear women talking in stormtrooper outfits. They don't make the outfits like they make it in those 
Star Wars pornos where they're all molded to their body. Uh-huh. So they all look alike. Which is good. Makes them more interesting. Yeah, definitely. Especially um, Captain Phasma, played by Gwendolyn Christie. We never get to see her face, but she's there. She is tall. <laughs> She's, <laughs> she's menacing in that silver uh, Stormtrooper outfit. I was not pleased with her character. Well, she, least, didn't get, she didn't get much on screen. Which is exactly why I'm not happy with it. Like, because leading up to the film, like, all the marketing and stuff like that, there was there's so much Captain Phasma out there. And, like, everyone was all excited that Gwendolyn Christie was going to be in the movie. And then that's what they gave us. And that's it. I'm not happy with it at all. She, who knows? She might be coming back. That's all I'm going to say. Any more, that would be too much of a spoiler. Yeah. And I would be pleased if she did. I'd like to see more of her. Like, some real character development would be cool. But maybe a fight scene? I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I think that Stormtrooper with that, like, electric baton had more of a fight scene than most of the Stormtroopers yeah. in that whole scene. That was a badass scene, and that's not really spoiling it, because that's in one of like, the third yeah, trailer or something like that. And that is, he has, like, a shield and a baton, and damn, like, so they were expecting to face Jedi. That's, that, you know. That's, yeah, I could see that as being something that they take into consideration. I mean, they're, they're they're hunting, you know, the you know, the strongest Jedi around. So yeah, I would expect they actually have a group of stormtroopers dedicated to that. They have flamers to take care of. Oh, them. they were so cool. Yeah, the flamers were interesting. It's like we get to see stormtroopers burning stuff. Maybe that's what happened in the uh, the original trilogy to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Either that, or they left the oven on. I like Robot Chicken's explanation. It's funnier. <laughs> yes. But, uh, poor Aunt Peru and, uh, and Uncle, was it? So, yeah, this movie did bring back a lot of, you know, childhood feelings. You, uh, We applauded at the beginning, in the middle, at the end. Well, actually, we applauded several times in the middle as well. Um, during certain parts because it you know brought back a lot of nostalgia but seeing it a second time you do you do sort of get to pick it apart slightly but I still love the film see I'm just waiting to see when they do the next Slave Leia costume no I'm just kidding I know that <laughs> yes <laughs> no Disney cancelled it I know I was so mad I'm like really I feel like there's enough cosplayers though that they'll keep it alive yeah. yeah, but I want to see her in it. <laughs> oh, I'm which kidding. one? Daisy Ridley or? No, I was talking about Leia herself. I was joking. But Daisy Ridley is more than welcome to join in on that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Go Daisy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the actors in here, especially Daisy Ridley, uh, leading up to the film, she is so adorable with her, you know, being so excited for the film. And oh, she's um, so funny to watch in the interviews. Oh yeah, I follow her uh, Twitter and her Instagram, and also John Boyega. John Boyega is like a huge fanboy. Yeah, he's awesome. And leading up to the film, you know, just watching all his stuff he posts, you just couldn't wait for the uh, film to come out. In fact, he's still in uh, London, he's still going around to theaters, showing up out of nowhere, surprising people at um, showings. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, he's been do- he's been doing this like the whole week, just you know, showing up at theaters, surprising people out of nowhere, sometimes even unannounced, and you know, asking people if they like the movie or not, and they're just freaking people out because they realize it's Finn. So, that's pretty cool. You can see he's really enjoying you know the stardom, and they in about let's see, two and a half weeks, well about two weeks when this podcast comes out. In uh, January, they will be starting to shoot episode eight, which yeah. will be released in 2017. Oh man, I can't wait! And episode nine will be released in 2019. So technically, oh, but, it's almost like back to back to back. Boba Fett's getting his own movie. 
Oh, yes, I can't wait. Oh, oh my god, how have we not mentioned that yet? Boba Fett is getting his own movie. I forgot I heard that. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome, and I, I'm really looking forward to how they're, you know, having a movie in between each uh, main episode, like episode seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Because in about a year and a half, we're getting Rogue One, the yeah. story how they got the Death Star plans. Yeah, I wonder how that's gonna be perceived or uh, received because it's not. I don't want to say it's not a real Star Wars movie, but it's not part of like the saga, so to speak. Yeah, it's sort of like a side story um, to what happened. We're going to probably be able to finally find out what the hell are Bothans. Yeah. And why they so many had to die. Which I feel like like that one line enough is enough to set up a pretty epic story. Yeah, definitely. But... I, I always pictured when I was younger, I always pictured Bothans to be these little fuzzy creatures like Ewoks. Yeah, I always pictured them something along the lines of like, like a cross between like if you mix like an Ewok and a Jawa and the little things from Cloud City, <laughs> like it just uh, they, somehow that's what I always thought of. Yeah, you get Bothans, and Minnie had to die to get these plans out. You could just see them like running down a Death Star corridor, just getting like mowed down on their way out. And that's just what I always pictured. Like lemmings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about the lemmings. Uh, no, and I'm. You know, really interested in seeing different directors take their vision, uh, you know, to the series because we see J.J. Abrams already with Episode Seven, and next will be Ryan Johnson, and after that we get Colin Trevorrow, who just um, had his record broken for Jurassic World, you know, big opening weekend this year, <laughs> being broken by Star Wars, and then passing down the torch saying, "Congratulations, you broke our weekend record." And uh, Colin Trevorrow was taking over episode nine. See, I just the thing is that there's too many directors. Sometimes the vision gets lost and they start deviating. I think they should have just kept it with one director. And especially since they don't have like the original, or let's just say the the saga, they didn't have like George Lucas's guiding hand throughout the whole thing. So the vision was like maintained because I mean the the original trilogy all had different directors and whatnot, but George Lucas was still in control, you know. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think throughout this series, I think J.J. Um, Abrams is going to still stay EP behind the scenes, and I think it's going to be still run by a bad robot. Yeah, I hope so. So, so uh, you know, there's still going to be that behind the scenes stuff, but uh, recently J.J. Abrams said uh, in an interview that he, you know, he looked at the script for episode 8, and now he regrets turning down episode eight. <laughs> yeah, that uh, man. I just, I just hope that there's like some kind of consistency. You know, I hope because this movie was fantastic, and I don't want to go from like this to like the a uh, Phantom Menace. You know, except for that awesome scene with Darth Maul fighting in the yeah. Clothes. I mean. That was the best part of the movie. Yeah, even if you absolutely hate that movie, that scene was still amazing. I mean, who doesn't remember the music Duel of Fates? No, and, and they kept that music throughout all three of the, the uh, prequels. Yeah, definitely. That was the fight music for a while. Yeah, I, I love that John Williams came back, back on board here and composed the fil uh, film's music. It was just masterful, in my opinion. Yeah, it was it was perfect, and that, like that was a big part of you know making us feel at home again, you know, because I don't, I I wouldn't trust anyone else to do Star Wars because it's it's not John Williams. He has he he is Star Wars, you know, in a musical sense. Yeah, definitely. Now I'm gonna say something really quickly. It's it's kind of in the area of spoilers, not spoilers, sort of in like the gray area. So if anybody doesn't want to hear about it uh, like fast forward like four or five minutes from now so I'll let you try that and then we'll go on so five four three two one all right so the lightsaber battle so we uh, earlier we talked about lightsabers in here and how uh, specific characters picked up the lightsabers and knew how to use it in my opinion, I didn't find that to be a 
um, a really well done Jedi battle because yeah. it see it, it seemed you know with one of the characters completely untrained with lightsaber just uh, uh, the way the character thrusted the way uh, the character swung it didn't seem in full control and especially uh, Kylo Ren even though he uses a lightsaber a lot it didn't look like he finished his lightsaber training no and see. I, well, no, but the, 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 the training part, they do touch on that, though, part of it, because... At the end? Yeah. Yeah, Snoke says Kylo's ready to finish his training, so, you know. I, yeah, and they mention what happened to his trainer, who uh, left early, we'll say. Yeah. See, I saw that... Watching that duel, I was... I was happy with it, in the sense that... I felt like they... They didn't do anything wrong with it, because... I do feel like Kylo, his character, you know, he is trained, but there, you know, I'm, I have doubts as to how well he was trained and by whom, you know, and he has a lot of like just raw anger that he's not really controlling well, and I think that does translate into his fighting style, you know, and then, uh, Plus, there's something that happens to him that also probably is dumbing his his fighting skills down as well. Exactly. You know, I'm not going to say what happens, but there is something happening. Yeah, it, uh, it it reminded me of the duel between Obi Wan and Vader in A New Hope because, as far as duels go, like choreography wise, that one was the worst. That one sucked. All they were just they poking did, each other. <laughs> yeah, they just poke and walk around the hallway. But, you know, that fight had huge implications and whatnot for the plot and stuff, so it it was still epic. And that was, you know, the first lightsaber fight anyone had ever seen. So that was great. But, you know, and this one, it was great. It was, you know, the the effects were awesome. It was It's nice to see a good old-fashioned, you know, blue on red again. And, you know, the, the setting was pretty incredible oh yeah very snowy very uh, very forest like I, i'm thinking in the next couple films that the lightsaber battles will be more you know like something you see in uh or have seen in the uh prequels you know the lightsaber fight the battles and more more choreographed more smooth looking when they're fighting instead of more uh trying to bang away like you're taking a bat to somebody yeah and yeah I, 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 I blame a lot of that on Kylo Ren's character you know and how that how everything that happened to him in the movie translated into how he felt going into that fight which makes sense I want to say like you know I would assume that you know by the last movie of this trilogy like they've done with every trilogy the lightsaber fight's gonna, just going to be insane you know Oh yeah, oh. definitely. And I, I feel like the next one's it's got to have a good one, you know. Oh, yeah, it's got to be a. Tra- I, I, I would love if they actually made a training montage. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be great. That'd be cool. And they'll play Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, all I can say is that uh, Luke Skywalker does show up in here, but that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, because you have to be there because it's more of an emotional thing when you finally get to see him. Yeah, and I feel like there's there will be a lot to talk about that in the spoiler version of this. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, we we really didn't talk about. Um, there's a character in here that really wasn't explored very much. Uh, Maz. Uh, she was that uh, that creature uh, that ran that. Sort of like a cantina. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if I can actually get a full name up here. But no, she uh, she ran that sort of like a cantina, and she has a history with them. Apparently, she's like like a thousand years old. She has like the googly eyes. Yes, the googly. She's been around since the Sith, since the Empire, and now since uh, for the First Order. Yeah, so she's seen a lot. Yeah, having her at, at a thousand years old, that would put her roughly at the fall of the Sith, 
and the rise of the, the Republic. But see, I get. I didn't. I don't need like a whole lot of explaining on like she's got history with Han because she fits that personality and her. You know that whole. That whole setting seems like a very Han Solo kind of place where you know a smuggler would go to hang out, or whatever. But she goes way mm. deeper than that, and there's a lot of stuff that needs answering. Yeah, definitely, and and uh, I think she might. I I see her as a character coming back for the next one. Yeah, I I don't know if she is coming back, but she there's too much you know talked about her to not you know bring her character back yeah and even if they don't bring her back like we had said earlier the next episode is, is going to have to have a ton of exposition in it I mean we don't want too much exposition, exposition otherwise the movies is you know it won't be fun for anybody No, and but, but there would be the, some type of explanation maybe yeah, a flashback or something there are explanations that need to happen because I mean, I like a lot of the questions and stuff that I have. I know they're not going to get answered in a movie, but there are some that it's necessary to the plot. Like we need to know what happened, and then all these fan theories. Like I can't believe how many theories this movie generated. Like, oh yeah, like a day. There's like all these theories, and like every there's like a lot of consistency among these theories, and you know everyone seems to be on the same track. So you know I feel like. They did it on purpose, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. But I, yeah, another character I thought that got a lot of play in here was Chewbacca, because he really didn't get any play at all in the prequels. No, I think yeah, he was in the last movie, and that was it. But he's become like a fan favorite, you know. Everyone loves Chewie. Oh yeah, we finally also get to see more of that uh, crossbow uh, blaster that he has, and. Uh, Finally, Han gets to actually wield it, and realizing it's hella powerful. Yeah, that was funny, to, especially to think like in all the time that they've been together, that was the first time he ever shot it. I think Han's more of a, a person that likes to wield, a, you know, a single hand gun. Yeah, but you would think, you know, at some point in all the crazy things that they must have been through. At some point, he would have grabbed it and shot it, you know, just because that was the closest thing to him. Oh, yeah, and being chased all around the galaxy by Boba Fett throughout their years, because, you know, they have a history with each other. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting, Realizing he's realizing that, wow, you know, this is powerful. <laughs> oh, I like this. Oh, and did you heard about the the lady who was a stunt woman for the movie? She got seriously injured on this next movie she did, and they're going to amputate her leg. She got mass no, scar. I thought, I thought it was her arm. What? I thought her, it was her arm. arm. You're right. Yeah. Arm. I said yeah. leg. She got injured on the set of Resident Evil. Yeah, the last Resident Evil they're making. So that that's very sad. Yeah. The, these are the people that make uh, a lot of the characters in there. Um, you know, they stand in for some of the characters and do incredible stunts and sometimes these stunts can be very, you know, life threatening, but it makes the scene, you know, just that awesome. And it's it's really disappointing that she you know, this is her career. Yeah. So I wanna be a stunt person. You have to sign a huge waiver and a big insurance bill. I already did that. And you have to move to California. So we could we'll move to California. Order water from Arizona because they don't have much, very much water there. <laughs> or where? In California. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, we had plenty of water when we went. So no, it's um yeah, unfortunate for her. Yeah. But there was some awesome you know stunts in here, practical effects. You could just see the practical effects in here, you know, mixed with the CGI. But you kn you knew that a lot. Uh, times they were on location. There was not a blue screen behind them. And it was just cool to see because when you watch uh, the making of, you know, behind the scenes of the prequels, they're pretty much on sets with green screen all around them. Pretty much the whole time. And it's so disappointing not seeing an on you know, set or on location uh, for the film that it just takes away that, you know, the aura that 
was the original trilogy, where a lot of the stuff was, you know, done in the desert. A lot of the stuff was done in you know, the forest locations and everything. So we we get actually we get a forest location, we get a snowy location, and we get a desert location. So we technically got Hoth, Tatooine, yeah. and <laughs> and Endor. Uh, so I thought this film did a really good job, um, especially with you know the New Republic's ultimate weapon. Uh, there might be a little bit of replay here for some fans. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, you know, making them think of some of the other parts of the original trilogy, but I enjoyed it for what it was. It's really um, bringing a new generation to Star Wars, for some that haven't even seen Star Wars before. Uh, I've heard, you know, some of my friends that have, you know, they're either their kids or their girlfriends or whatever, they've never seen Star Wars in their life, and now they want to go back and watch the original trilogy, because they've never seen it. No, I had somebody ask me which show, which movie they should start with. <laughs> yeah, just say oh. A New Hope, Episode 4, don't watch the prequels, they never, they don't exist. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. I'm start like, with I didn't and realize she's never seen it. And when you finish 6, I'll tell you what happened in 1 through 3. <laughs> In like uh, a one sentence or ten a ten minute thing, and then it'll be done. <laughs> yeah, why a child won't. grows up and kills everyone. There you go. <laughs> the end. Hey. He's a whiny little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Puts a baby in a senator. Baby saves the galaxy. And Jar Jar Binks votes for the for the Empire. There yeah. <laughs> That's actual canon. <laughs> so, all right. So we already gave our. Uh, score at the beginning of this review do we have any afterthoughts mm, I can't think of anything else I'm nope, gonna see it again this weekend so definitely and we'll definitely go in more in depth for our spoiler review that might end up being like a two hour review <laughs> yeah that could yeah that could be a long one because there's so much to talk about and so much to say that we really had to tiptoe around this review and even with the whole uh, lightsaber thing that's still giving away a lot even though we didn't we only named one character uh, yeah. in that whole conversation but uh, Star Wars right now uh, by the time this comes out which is probably a couple days from now uh, this will probably be like after Christmas so this will probably be a really sun like Saturday uh, by the time this comes out, this will have probably broken the record of a billion dollars because it's already up to seven hundred million. Oh yeah, well you knew it was going to break records when you started seeing theaters selling out. What's so. the uh, who's top in the box office right now? Uh, like of all time? Uh, I believe it's Avatar. Avatar. Chick no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, wow. I was joking. A I believe it's Avatar. Oh, okay, yeah, that was... Uh, oh, okay. Avatar still ahead? Of... Avatar is still ahead, but it looks... It, um, Star Wars is on... Uh, knocking on it, you know its back door, pretty much saying that, hello, I'm here, yeah. and I'm ready to destroy destroy it's your record. Age. And, uh, you know, it's made the first weekend and made, was it over $300 million, I believe? Yeah, that's insane. Uh, let's see. Nation... Uh, internationally over 500 million dollars so it's broken the Monday record which I believe, think belonged to Spider-Man 2 um, and it's broken the Tuesday record um, today is Wednesday a day before Christmas Eve and that's probably going to break a record so it's it has plenty of time and especially with Christmas Eve and Christmas I mean people are going to open their presents and guess what you got us theater tickets yeah. <laughs> where are we going well, definitely not Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> uh, did you see that? I don't know how true this is, but did you see the meme where they're saying the Simpsons predicted the movies? Um, and it shows like like out some at somewhere in Hollywood, some theater, um, and it shows um, Alvin and the Chipmunks um, get rabies, and then on the other poster, it's Star Wars: The Apology. Oh. So saying, the Simpsons predicted something else again. I think I've seen that somewhere. I, 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 now, I don't know if it's real or photoshopped, mind you. No, but I think I've seen that somewhere. So, I, yeah, we, it's hard to tell these days because of Photoshop. Yes. But 
Yeah, it's it's going to be huge. It's and um, J J Abrams and Disney, it, they're really cleaning up. This has been a really good investment for them. Even if this film didn't break records at the box office, they have all that merchandising. So that four billion dollars is looking like chump change right now. Uh, for what they paid for the Star Wars series from George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be going way above because originally Wall Street said to make a dent on Wall Street for their stock, they would have to make $1.5 billion. And now people are projecting that this will probably end up making $2.2 billion. Damn. So, yeah, that's a lot of money. And that's not even counting the uh, merchandise, if I remember correctly. So... They, they're merchandising apples and oranges. Oh, yeah, they slap Star Wars on everything now. Everything. They could slap a Star Wars on your own baby, and then they own it. Yeah. <laughs> so, definitely go out to see it. It is out in theaters right now. It is PG-13. It has, of course, it has violence, but most people are bringing their kids to it. Because, seriously, kids watch enough violence on television. So Yeah. You know, this is nothing really big. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to be brought to a new universe. If they've never seen Star Wars before, this is the, you know, I wouldn't say this is a perfect introduction to it, but they're going to see this and then they're going to want to want more. Yeah. And they have more, except for the prequels, which the kids will love the prequels. They're not looking for good dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> or good acting. They're looking for bang, bang, pew, pew. When they get older and they start to realize that they made a mistake, that's when, you know, that's when they going to therapy and psychiatrists will tell them you know what's wrong and it's like I, I watched his prequels and I thought they were good yeah <laughs> uh, see I, I still for the most part I love Revenge of the Sith I'm oh I love Revenge of the Sith the, the dialogue was horrible I think the best the best actor in Revenge of the Sith was uh, Ewan McGregor oh he made, yeah, he made yeah. it fun he made it really fun yeah yes. and the, I did love uh, I loved Palpatine in all of them his he was so over the top, though, when he became the Emperor. Yeah. No, no, no! <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I enjoyed his character. That, that was great. I love the Emperor. But, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely go out to see it. Um, see it, it, it's in IMAX 3D. It's in, it's in a theater near you. D-Box, I really want to see the D-Box. D-Box, I heard, is incredible. Like, the seats have speakers in them, and it, the seats vibrate. Oh, that'd be fun. Every time there's an action scene. There's there's a few theaters in the Valley that have D-Box seats, and they're more expensive. They're about, like, 20 something dollars a ticket. Oh, God. But, I mean, you get an experience when you get in that seat. I, I've sat in there once for a movie, and you just the seat rattles every time there's uh, and moves around slightly. So you're getting a really different experience than any other type of um, movie theater. But, yeah, definitely go see it. It's worth it. It's worth seeing it multiple times if you're a fan. If you're not a fan, you're going to probably nitpick slightly into it, but you're probably going to still enjoy it. If you are a fan, you're going to love it. And maybe later on, write some nitpicks in, in the end and, and bitch and gripe about it because that's how a lot of people are doing it online right now. <laughs> yeah, but at the end... Or make theories. Not the prequels. Yes, definitely. And thank you, J.J. Abrams, for bringing Star Wars back to us. Yeah. And uh, I would like to uh, thank my co-hosts uh, for coming on, uh, especially the one who had to leave early, Nate, and uh, Jana. La, 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 la. And Mick. Uh huh. And I would like to thank our listeners for listening to our newest review of Cinematic Gnerdgasm. Uh, please visit our Facebook at facebook.com slash jpools gnerd corner. Uh, subscribe to this podcast right below. There's a subscribe button right there. And share this podcast. Uh, tell us what you think and tell us what you thought about the film itself. Did you like the film? Did you hate the film? Did you want more for the film? And are you looking forward to the 2017 and 2019 openings of Episode 8 and 9? So, thank you for listening. 
And remember, may the force be with you. And don't forget to enjoy your chimichanga.